You tell me that video games think that I'm stupid. What'd I do? I love this guy's VTuber model. Um, when it comes to playing video games. Uh -huh. So much so that my two brain cells will implode if I don't know so where to video. go or what to do next. Yeah, I'll be real, man. I feel like for me, for video games, if I get lost a single time, I'm good. Uh, same thing with Elden Ring, man. When, 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 when there's all this bullshit of like, oh, dude, it's open world. I don't care. I like linear. I like knowing where the f I need to go. I like knowing how the f to get there. Like, dude, I don't know what you want me to say. Like, do you think it's fun for me to be told, hey, man, there's this crazy store and that has sales, Baja Blast. I ain't gonna tell you how to get there, but it's there. Go find it. No, bro, I'm just gonna pull up Google Maps and go there. It's the same way I play every video game. Elden Ring, how to get to next boss. How to get to next boss. I swear to God, if I didn't have chat here tell me where the f*** go, I would just quit. I just can't do it. It is not hard to beat the bosses in the Souls games. It's hard figuring out how to, f to get there. Should I step in the I stand by that. trap? <laughs> <laughs> but even I notice when game devs beg my dopamine deprived brain by doing everything in their power to grab my attention. Okay, so that is also where I quit. I quit this game immediately. I mean, I got the Poppy's Playtime Chapter 3. I quit immediately. Backtracking and backtracking and backtracking. Bro, there is nothing worse than backtracking in a video game. So we're going to the counselor's office. Where the f*** is that at? Yep. I'm assuming it's by this giant beam of light. So let's uncover the actual reason why games might be treating their players like their babies at every Because they're turn. stupid. Because it might be more necessary than you think. No, no, no. It's not gamers that are stupid. It's people in general. The average human is stupid. The average human is not smart. Like 3% of humans are actually smart. The rest are dumbasses, because that's what the world wants you to be. If I put a random person in front of a modern day video game, yep. the chances of them at least knowing where to go are fairly high, no, unless no, they're not. a games journalist. Oh, jeez, uh, not again. Uh, maybe if I, uh, let me go over here real quick. Duck. Okay, uh, you know, uh, okay, I'm, There's no I'm way definitely that's not doing this to fill time so the video can get to eight minutes for mid-rolls. But if I were to stick them in the water temple level from Legend of Zelda no Ocarina way. of Time, no way. they'd end up spending hours trying to figure out what key goes to what door. No, <clears throat> when I was a kid, I'm not even kidding you guys. Three weeks it took me on Water Temple. Three weeks. I will say as an adult, an hour and a half. As a kid, three weeks. Luckily, anyone born in the 1990s like me remembers that there was one thing that constantly saved us, and that wasn't the game. Guidebooks! GameStop. Do you mean the hot goth girl Guide behind the counter that would purposely ignore you? Well, yes, but what I really meant were the $20 game guides you yep. could buy back then. The Dude, I had the World of Warcraft one, and I would read it non- Stop, bro. It was the shit. I even had the Ocarina of Time one, but I wasn't allowed to look at it, even though my brothers used it. Same thing with the Majora's Mask one. Their Nintendo power was the shit. The problem with this, though, is one, you have to read, and two, you have to completely interrupt your playthrough to skim to the right page and pray to find a clear solution. Nope, you just pre-read that shit when you're in third grade. Solution. This evolved over time, though, with finding help on game forums and 140 walkthrough videos on YouTube. Personally, I still remember going on GameFAQs to figure out how to solve the Reggie Trio puzzle in Pokemon Emerald. This being like <laughs> 15 years ago, That's so awesome. in-game hints were usually so cool. absent or pretty obscure at best. But this is where modern video games come in, because instead of needing a guide or looking up answers, Game developers got pretty good at learning one thing, mind control. What if- Dude, I genuinely feel like the government has gotten better at mind control in the past like 10, 20 years. Because that's essentially what advertising and sponsorships are. Like the government trying to control the way that the people in their country think in order to milk every last ounce of effort and dollar from them. If I told you that those sneaky little bastards were actually controlling your brain from the very start, forget the yellow paint yellow discourse paint. because I'm about to ruin how you see video games forever. Fair but enough. to do that, we need to look at the human brain. Okay. Our brain has been trained since we were apes to look for specific colors and contrast, and those Yellow signal red. our primitive minds to subconsciously think certain things over time. Okay. <laughs> This has evolved to include things like video games. When I Ow. show you this red cylinder, what do you immediately assume Shoot about it. it? That red means danger and it'll explode, right? Yep. And if it doesn't, then it's time to get a refund. Yep. Alternatively, have you ever wondered why some of the highest tiers in games have a yellow color theme? It's because out of every color, yellow and gold are linked to giving humans the feeling of joy and happiness. Combine red and yellow, 
think blue, personally, blue makes me happy. Oh, and your mind will start to feel hungry. Kind of makes hungry. you wonder about all those fast food logos. Okay, I knew the yellow and red were to incite hunger, yeah. Huh. Listen, fat ass, stop thinking about food and tell me how games tell players where to go. Yeah. Dude, I want you to imagine the sensation of buying a McDonald's 10-piece chicken nugget with barbecue sauce, a large fry, a McDouble with Big Mac sauce on it, and a Coke. And imagine your ass eating that right now, bro. Oh my God. Imagine some piping hot McDonald's brought to your house by a minority. Can you imagine that shit, bro? Dude, I'm telling you, go on DoorDash. Whether there's a tornado outside, an earthquake, get, your, get yourself a minority to bring you some fast food today, man. That shit is insane, bro. Imagine pizza instead. Nah, no, bro. That. Absolutely not. I just ate. Eat again. Eat again, bro. <laughs> Oh, McDonald's sound insane, bro. Yeah, yeah, all right, fine. Look, I'm gonna show you this level from Portal 2, except all the lights are turned on, which makes it look disgusting. I can guarantee you that if you sat any normal person in front of this, yeah. they would have trouble understanding where to go. All right, now turn them off. You can see that your eyes are immediately drawn towards the lights, yep. which are carefully placed not just to light up important areas, yep. but to constantly draw your attention to specific game mechanics. Makes sense. Okay, this works for dark areas, but what about areas with the sun? Uh -huh. This gets a bit trickier, especially with modern games who have constantly evolved to have more realistic graphics. What? One of the most that? recent and completely overblown examples being the infamous yellow painted climbable rocks in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. As you can tell, they stand out pretty easily to anyone who has a room temperature IQ. And things yeah, like this that. are usually just done with a simple material swap or decal, which in the- Yeah, but it doesn't really break my immersion because I just think that somebody's been there before and so they mocked it for themselves. Just in case they forgot. You know, I feel like some people would probably do that if they needed to climb up the mountain. Grand scheme of things is a pretty just cheap a solution guy. to guiding the player. I'm gonna, I'm telling you this right now. I'm sorry, you guys, you guys that don't like this, gamers are f***ing stupid, okay? Dude, also, I don't mind it at all. It does not bother me a bit. If this wasn't painted yellow, nobody would f***ing know. Straight up. Could they have done like a, a brick? Yeah, sure. But who cares. This isn't always enough though, so there are other ways that don't exactly involve the environment. Like when side characters completely destroy any hope of immersion you had by telling you things like This might be a good spot to find some ingredients. Or I would take a gun, shove it down Donald Duck's throat, and blow his f intestines out if I had to hear that shit longer than five minutes. And every single time I threw a Oh, dude, the best game of all time is Kingdom Hearts. No, it's not. There's no way I'm having Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and Goofy as my allies in justice. There's just no way. Or even... And I would eat him. <laughs> Being cursed with dopamine. Bro, can you imagine the satisfaction of grabbing Navi by her wings, ripping them off as she screams, shoving her down your mouth, and having her like a cream puff bro as you hear her bones snap underneath your teeth each time you take a bite in addiction myself i'm personally a fan of breadcrumbing the player around with shiny objects mm -hmm. something that a game like final fantasy 7 rebirth actually does pretty well and what the stigma yo what's up johnny but even when you combine all of these things there still seems to be an unforeseen issue yeah, if that? my immersion is broken then i have to face real life and on top of that my d student <laughs> intellect is insulted whenever dude you ever like like 12 hours into an mmo rpg gaming sesh and then you realize that you're looking at a monitor right but like for those 12 hours you felt that you were in the game and then you remember there's black borders around your monitor oh my god it's so depressing or when you turn it off you stand up realize that you're human and you're hungry you have to go eat pass out wake up and you're not in gaming mode yet you let out a big sigh because your three elf girls in your party that are sucking your dick daily aren't there yet you go throw water in your face hoping to forget you sit down in the gaming chair and you're locked up in for another 12 men. Ever game guides are done haphazardly, so how do we solve it? It turns out that the solution isn't exactly an easy thing to do because okay. we're trying to do the world's hardest balancing act of accessibility versus freedom. The thing about humans is we actually are kind of stupid. Who is Take one look at your favorite Twitch streamer's Eldering playthrough and you'll realize that. Can you outrun a- Uh, let the record show that I obliterated Elden Ring, okay? Let the record show I 
obliterated Elden Ring. It was not even close. And I only got stuck on one boss, the boss that everybody gets stuck on. And I was under leveled and I was using a bad build and I still crushed it. So do you finish it? I beat every boss. A bear. Yes, you can. Maybe not so that there's one. that. My horse. To gauge how stupid players are though, I want you to imagine the most tired, underpaid and underappreciated employee possible. This. Yeah. I see 2,000 of them right there. Is called the Quality Assurance Tester. Game companies will do things like hire QA teams to test and play through their game and report any bugs or frustrations they may have. After that, it's up to the game devs to prioritize which issues to solve before release. One of my favorite examples of this is Valve struggle during Portal 2's development doing their best to get the QA team to pay attention to the cool neurotoxin implosion scene. That's Nothing so cool. until they added a sign that said this, which somehow actually solved the problem. This just proves that if QA doesn't never... know where to go, the devs will make it more obvious by any means possible, I never beat or at least they used to. In the last 10 years, gaming has exploded in popularity, bringing on a whole lot of new players. This means that there's actually a high chance that some of these- I think that gaming is going to die very soon. I don't think it's going to grow in popularity. I feel like the browsing features of YouTube shorts and TikTok are going to kill gamers drives. And I really don't feel that games are kind of innovating at the speed they need to innovate in order to remain um, relevant for the foreseeable future. And I think that if you look at Twitch stream analytics, that that is really going to line up with what I'm saying, because the majority of people don't even want to watch games because a lot of them are just Dated, man. And for the new ones, they take years to make and they only last like an hour. But it's really sad. These players might have some sort of physical disability like color blindness. How the hell is anyone supposed to tell where they're going when all the glowing green doors are more of a soft brown? In fact, if you're a man watching this right now, there is a 1 in 12 chance you are colorblind to some degree. And ah. if you're a woman, congratulations on being the first to actually watch one of our videos. I could... <laughs> Oh, damn, bro, too real. I couldn't agree more. And if you take all of these points and throw them together, it turns out that there's a lot of complex things to consider when guiding players. Accessibility versus freedom will always be that balancing act that we talked about. But I do think that there are some games that do a great job at taking it head on. Consider something like Elden Ring, whose handholding, if you could even call it that, is very subtle. The guidance to lead players to the sites of grace isn't in your face constantly begging for attention. Very good point. And when I found one, I felt like I got there of my own accord, not like I was led there. But it's one of the best games of all time. So you can stay focused. I would argue Elden Ring's it's Elden Ring is surely in the top 20 games of all time for sure. On being femdom by millennia. There are also lots of games now that have the option to outright turn off quest markers like Cyberpunk, Xenoblade Chronicles, and the list goes on. And while this personally doesn't really bother me, I like the solution to give the players the freedom of choice. All right, so we've covered a lot. So do games really think you're stupid? Even though it can seem like it sometimes, wipe that drool off your mouth because the answer is no. You, yeah, they do. You have nothing to worry about. Unless you like worrying, then check out this video on if AI robot overlords will take over video games forever. Got I hope so. No, I mean, I do think games do think you're stupid because I feel like you are stupid. I feel like the majority of people on earth are stupid. But then again, I also don't think that there's anything wrong with being stupid. I feel like majorly that stupid people are more happier. And I feel like the smarter you get, the more aware you get, the more miserable you are. So me personally, I don't like guilting people who are dumb. I love people who are dumb. Uh, I think they're just a lot more enjoyable to be around, not criticizing everything that goes on around them, not nitpicking or mint picking everything that's in front of them. And it's just kind of nice because they live in their own world. And I wish I was in there too. But the problem is I'm just cursed with this big fat cock and this big old brain. Make sure to go like, comment, subscribe to the video. See you on the next one. Peace, boys.